guys, welcome to TCR, Sid here. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna talk about some wonderful and weird chicken facts that you didn't know you needed to know. Resident crazy chicken lady. I even dragged my husband to Las Vegas to get married at the Flamingo. That's how bird obsessed I am. I needed live pink birds in the background while we did our nuptials, okay? I love birds. Most homesteaders start out with at least a basic flock of chickens, but do they really know what those birds are all about? Chickens actually see in color. Now, I don't know what purpose this really serves for them, but I guess I never really thought about it, but how cool is that that they see in color? Mother hens while sitting on their nest can also talk to their chicks in the shell once they're developed enough. They'll actually hear them peep back and they can kind of cluck back and forth. I guess you can kind of call them like uh, birthing coaches. There's over 25 billion chickens on the planet. They outnumber us four to one. If they wanted to, they could overtake us. Think about that. Especially since they're kind of like direct descendants from dinosaurs and you can totally see this with the way a chicken will run at you head on with its floppy little legs going. They kind of look like little velociraptors. A lot of people think that chickens are herbivores. They are not. They are omnivores. What this can mean for your flock specifically is that if they don't get enough uh, animal protein, so to speak, they can get a little peckish with each other and sometimes even get cannibalistic in their, if they're in too close a quarters. The way to combat this is make sure that they have plenty of uh, fresh meat available. You'll often see your chickens going after field mice, lizards, but this time of year in the winter when those things are a little bit more scarce, you might have to toss them some extra meaty bits every now and then from your leftovers. A rooster will often pick a favorite girl and this is usually outside of the pecking order of the flock, which means that she could be a low ranking hen, but she might be his favorite. In these cases, a lot of times, even after the rooster is removed, that girl's gonna get picked on by those other girls that maybe got a little jealous that he didn't like what they had to offer. Maybe he's just not that into you. Roosters will do lots of things to stay on a hen's good side, even sometimes sitting on a nest, fluffing it up for them, guarding them while they're sitting on the nest. I've seen this happen a few times with my flock and it's always very sweet. Co-parenting at its finest. Now, if he would only bring home flowers and remember put his laundry in the hamper, then he'd be a real winner. You can oftentimes in many breeds of chickens tell what color egg that chicken is gonna lay by the color of their earlobes. Now this isn't always true, but it is true quite often. Certain breeds like Silkies, Olive Eggers, and Americanas, oftentimes this is not the case. Silkies, some, many of them have blue earlobes, but they lay a white egg with uh, an Americana and an Easter Egger, a lot of times you can tell what color they're gonna lay, if it's gonna be more blue or green, based on their leg color. One of the most sought after slash rare cool chicken breeds is called an Indonesian Ayami Sarami. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but that's what I always call them. I actually have one. It was on my chicken bucket list. I named her Viola. She's all black, completely black. Her face, her eyes, her beak, her comb, her everything is black her feathers, and they get that kind of cool rainbowy effect, almost like a raven would in the sunlight, but they are all black. Legs are black, their meat is black, their insides are black, they are black. But they lay white eggs. These breeding pairs can get pretty pricey if you get a good line. All birds have one universal hole called a cloaca. This is where they excrete their waste, this is where they create life, and where they expel eggs from. Only 3% of the world's birds have, well, male appendages, so to speak. We'll call them outies. It's believed that over the course of time, the majority of species of birds, for whatever reason during evolution, decided that this wasn't necessary or appropriate any longer. So they actually developed a gene called BMP4, which activates while the chicken and the quail and lots of other birds are in the embryo, in the egg developing, and that gene kicks in. It actually causes those specific Audi cells to die off, therefore rendering them Audi-less. 
But the cool thing is that these ducks and geese have these long corkscrew ones. Certain breeds have them sort of barb lined, which sounds pleasant. Now a duck, for example, will corkscrew one way while the female duck will corkscrew the other way. When the duck and the drake, the male duck are mating, um, if that duck doesn't really think that drake is her best option available and doesn't really want to have ducklings with him, she can close off her vent inside of her cloaca and off shift him so that he doesn't fertilize any of her eggs. Chickens can kind of do this too. If a chicken mates with one rooster and then a little bit later mates with another rooster that she finds more desirable, she can actually expel up to 80% of his sperm out of her cloaca to make room for the one that she likes that she wants to fertilize her embryos in her eggs. He's a better baby daddy. You know, the one that her mother would approve of, the one that's a doctor, drives a nice car and has a 401k. Yeah, that rooster. And as those birds that no longer have male appendages evolved, they actually just excrete from cloaca to cloaca their sperm so that they can get the deed done. Those hens actually have a special little sack inside of them that can hold that uh, rooster's sperm for up to three weeks to continue to fertilize eggs that entire time. So that's why if you have a hen that is exposed, same is true for most of your, you know, turkeys, things like that. If you have a hen that is exposed to a rooster, then, and you don't want babies from that barnyard mix, but you want her to breed with your whatever of the same breed, you want to make sure that you isolate those roosters from those hens and give them a good three weeks to sort of reset and clean out their systems. So I just laid some weird and wonderful chicken facts on you and some bird facts in there too. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope maybe you learned something, maybe how to giggle, maybe how to chuckle, who knows? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for the notifications. Happy clucking.